Hi everybody, so it's another hop review today, but it's a bit of a special one because it is cryo hops. So this is a pack of those new um, Citra cryo hops that are available on a few of the home brewing uh, suppliers. I've got these ones from the Malt Miller. They are also selling Simcoe and Equinox at the moment as well as Citra. And they are about six, seven pounds for 50 gram, um, 50 gram packets of these. So cryo hops are basically the concentrated lupulin glands of the hops which have been extracted using uh, some sort of freeze drying process. So uh, hence the kind of cryo hops term that they've been labelled with and basically it means that you end up with a kind of double concentrate of the best part of the hop in terms of the aroma and flavour, um, aromatic oils that are going to be in there and as such you apparently should only need to use about 50% uh, of your usual dosage. The alpha acids are also effectively doubled so these ones are 24% alpha acid and uh, therefore obviously you're gonna need much less in terms of bittering additions and so on for them. I'm not gonna be using these for bittering. I don't wanna waste uh, them as an early boil addition. So these are all gonna be going in as very late additions, whirlpool, steep hops and dry hop for the recipe that I'm gonna do. So I was looking for something that used citra hops in it for a recipe to try these out on and one of the most obvious ones that came to mind was zombie dust because that's a uh, pretty well-known um, recipe and I've seen a lot of other people have brewed it and been really pleased with the results of that and obviously it's just got basically a shit ton of citra in it so it seems like that would be a good beer to kind of showcase uh, this type of hop in and see what effect it had on the flavour. But as I only had a small kind of 50 gram packet of these I didn't quite have enough to do a proper version of the zombie dust recipe which does use a hell of a lot of hops in it uh, and also um, having not actually brewed uh, that before I wouldn't really have a point of reference for whether or not they'd improved the flavour or uh, had more hop uh, impact versus normal pellets or leaf hops so I thought rather than doing the original zombie dust what I would do is come up with a recipe for a kind of session IPA that's kind of like a tribute to Zombie Dust uh, and I decided to call it uh, Zombie Baby because of that. So it's basically a uh, lower ABV um, IPA but still quite high uh, hopping rate. So the original Zombie Dust has something like 10 grams per litre or even more than that I think. So about 10 grams per litre hopping overall in terms of the total additions. For that brew on this one I've scaled it back slightly from that so bearing in mind that the cryo hops are effectively double the weight in terms of what you're adding you're looking at for this brew about eight grams per litre total hopping for this one so let's just have a quick look at the recipe that I've come up with for this and as you can see we're aiming for a fairly uh, low ABV in terms of a typical American IPA so about 4.4, 4 4.5%, 4 1043 OG. I'm using basically pale ale malt, Munich malt and then a combination of honey malt and crystal malt in there about 9% overall uh, honey and crystal malt. Honey malt is pretty much uh, a kind of a type of crystal malt really anyway. And then we've got the Apollo hops in there for bittering at 60 minutes and our crystal uh, and sorry and our cryo hops the citra 10 grams at 5 minutes 15 grams at flame out and then a dry hop of 25 grams now the batch size here is only 12 liters so bearing in mind that it's effectively sort of half a batch normal size batch the hops are also effectively double in terms of weight so what we're looking at there in terms of a say a normal 20 litre batch is something more along the lines of 30-40 grams at 5 minutes 
uh, 50 to 60 grams at flame out and then nearly 100 grams in terms of the dry hop if it was a normal size batch. So it's very hoppy, or it should be very hoppy, we'll see, um, depending on how these hops go. Okay, so I'm just gonna weigh some of this out now and immediately, as soon as the packet's open, the aroma of these really hits you. It's, um, yeah, it's definitely the recognizable aroma of Citra hops, but just quite a bit more intense and um, a little bit kind of danker than it would normally smell um, just with the normal pellets. They do look like, I don't know if you can see that, they are kind of in pellet form still, but they're a lot, um, they're a lot squishier and kind of breaking up a lot easier inside the packet. So presumably that's because there's not as much uh, leaf and um, plant material in there to kind of give it a bit more structure. Uh, but otherwise they just kind of look like, yeah, slightly squishy kind of hot pellets. So I'm just gonna weigh these out now and then we'll be ready to go and get these in the boil. Okay, so I've got those weighed out now, so it doesn't look like much, but as I said before, remember you can effectively kind of halve the quantity that you're adding in with these. So that's um, 10 and 15 grams for the late boil additions. The rest of that packet is gonna be going in as the dry hop. So that I need to now vacuum seal uh, as quickly as possible. Apparently, because the um, glands are all sort of uh, extracted and exposed in these, they degrade a lot quicker through oxygenation. So I don't wanna take any chances, although it's only gonna be uh, a week and a bit until they're going. Obviously, I wanna make sure that they're in the best possible condition. So these will be vacuum sealed uh, now and put back in the freezer to keep them as fresh as possible. So I've just hit a nice rolling boil. I'm just going to chuck in my bittering hops, which are the Apollo standard hop pellets going in there. Okay, so here's the first edition of the cryo hops going in. About five minutes remaining. Okay, so I've cooled that down to 80 degrees following flame out and now I'm just going to put in the last 15 grams of the cryo hops and I'll leave that to steep for about 15-20 minutes. So we're about 12 hours into the ferment and as you can see we're just starting to get some bubbling coming through and there's a little bit of krausening showing up on here there is a really strong aroma coming out of this very juicy kind of tropical um, fruit aromas so that's a good sign so far and uh, yeah knowing this um, cross my loaf yeast this will probably be done in two or three days, uh, but we'll leave it in the FE to settle out for the full two weeks as per usual. So here we have the finished product. It has been in the bottle for about a month now. Uh, as you can see, it's got really nice and clear. So the um, US Pale Ale yeast, the Cross My Loof one has dropped nice and clear uh, as per usual. It ended up coming out at uh, about 4.6%, so it was slightly stronger than expected. I did get a slightly higher um, original gravity than targeted and there was actually a little bit higher volume as well 
So uh, one of the things that I guess you could say is that in fact the um, the smaller volume of the hops because of the concentration did actually uh, I guess help to um, get a slightly better efficiency certainly in terms of volume don't know if it really affected getting the higher gravity as well but um, I wasn't really expecting to see any difference on that front but I guess uh, even with normal hot pellets if you halve the quantity um, going in you're going to see a little bit more coming out at the other end so I ended up with about half a litre extra into the FV so let's um, pop this open and see how we get on so it's not quite as carbonated as I would have expected um, for 2.3 volumes but there's a decent amount of hiss coming off of that and let's just get it into the glass you can see the carbonation coming out now I've actually sent one of these out already to Steve Molson for part of his prize for the uh, 300 subs comp that I did. Yeah, no need to worry about the carbonation, that's actually pretty fizzy. Uh, and he liked that beer, this beer, quite a lot. So thanks for that review, Steve. Um, I'm glad you liked it. And let's uh, see what we think about this. So, first of all, the aroma is just absolutely smashing out that citra um, citra hops aroma so you know very pungent kind of tropical um, fruit citrusy a little bit of that kind of mangoey um, grapefruit I guess are the two main things that I get from citra hops looks lovely in the glass nice sort of golden orangey colour to it um, nothing to do with the hops at all that but um, like the colour of the beer yeah it's it smells like it's got a shitload of hops in it which um, bearing in mind uh, the smaller batch and the fact that 50 grams of the cryo hops basically equals 100 grams it has got a lot so I think it was as I said before works out at just over 8 grams a litre in total um, we'll give it a taste now before I ramble on too much more. Yep, that's pretty nice. Um, again, just big citra flavour. Does it taste any different to a beer where you would have used the equivalent amount of normal hot pellets? I don't know, it's pretty difficult to say that really if you're not going to um, do a side-by-side -side test and use, uh, you know, so do the same recipe with 100 grams of normal pellets versus 50 grams of the cryo pellets. I've seen a lot of stuff online where people talk about it being maybe more juicy. Um, to be honest, I think if you're sticking in that quantity of hops anyway, you're going to get a fairly, you know, juicy result anyway. Um, but it's just, it's a really nice beer. I don't know, not sure what else to say. The cryo hops certainly haven't done it any harm at all. Um, I don't know if I really, you know, notice anything obviously different with this to a beer where I would have been putting in, you know, like I said, a, a similar amount of, of normal citra pellets. But, um, you know, clearly putting in less, you get a bit, a bit less wastage of the beer. They were quite easy to handle in terms of um, using them for the dry hop and during the boil. Um, so I'm pretty pleased with the result. It's uh, it's one that I would definitely... Well, I'd use these types of hops again. Um, I think I would like to try more than one in combination with each other. I do... Uh, I really like Citra hops and this beer is very nice. Um, but I think that probably... I like Citra a little bit more when it's in combination with other stuff, so this might be a slightly heretical thing to say, but um, you know, Citra's great, but I think I like it the most when it's actually um, kind of working off of uh, other hops in combination. Um, you know, put it in with a bit of uh, 
the classic sort of sea hops, Cascade, Centennial. I've made a few beers with Citra, uh, with those that have been fantastic. Um, as as good as the flavour is of Citra hops, I think they just work for me anyway a little bit better when you you add another uh, couple of layers of flavour in there with them. But this beer is lovely. I wouldn't, you know, I would certainly wouldn't be upset about getting this as a, um, a commercial IPA or a beer from somebody else. Uh, yeah, so Cryo Hops, pretty successful. Um, do I think they sort of bring anything extra? Um, not 100%, but like I said, if I'm not comparing it side by side with something using pellet hops or leaf hops, which would be the proper way to do this experiment, I guess, is to actually judge them side by side, then, uh, you know, I can't really, I can't really say, but for a 12 litre batch that had 50 grams of a hop in it, this tastes like it's absolutely hopped, um, you know, hopped to the, uh, hopped to the max, so, uh, yeah, they're good, they could give them a go, um, cryo hops, cheers everyone, and, uh, yeah, I'm probably going to be buying a few more of these at some point. L definitely be interested to see what the Simcoe ones are like and uh, if I've got any mosaic as well, that would be good. All right, so yeah, cheers, guys, and uh, happy brewing. I'm the dude, so that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino.